Let's hit the YOLO button. So if you've followed my channel for a long time, you know that I like making things. From the 3D printer projects, to thin clients, the clusters, to Seth, I like putting things together that could be useful for someone. But what you might not know is I don't actually use a lot of these things myself. They're more for learning and experimentation. I do have a cluster of three thin clients running Proxmox and Ceph, and it is hyper-converged. I learned a lot about the process. But do I actually use it on day to day? No, not really. My 3D printers are a good example too. My Prusa has probably spent more time making parts for itself to upgrade itself, to add cameras, add lights, fun features like that, than I've actually spent printing things for other projects. And that's not to say that upgrading the 3D printer is bad, but I like making the things that help other people make things. Making the machines that make the machines, if you will, but for makers. And that means I tend to do a lot of things that I don't end up using in the end. Today's project's a bit different. This is a CNC router. This is a Sane Smart Gen Mitsu 3018 Prover. The 3018 class desktop CNCs, basically as the name suggests, are 30 centimeters by 18 centimeters. That's the working area of the bed. Take the piece of wood off, you see you got a little piece of metal here that's not really that big. You're not gonna cut big stuff on this thing. It has a 60 watt spindle with an ER11 collet, so it can do you know, pretty tiny end mills, engraving bits. This thing runs a board based on the Gerbil open source firmware, which is great because that means I can use Gerbil software to control it and I do love free and open source software. So this machine is not actually mine. My dad bought it to cut thin polycarbonate for his projects, but he was too busy to learn how to use it. So I'm gonna set this up as a turnkey CNC appliance using my favorite Dell 3040 thin client as a web interface, and also learn all the feeds and speeds that he needs for his work. So let's see what we can do with all this stuff here. See if we can get something useful out of it. So I got the machine plugged in roughly. I got USB going to my MacBook. I got power going to the machine. Machine's turned on. The e-stop is not pressed, so we should be able to run, but we're gonna be very careful. So over here on my Mac, I'm using a program called CNC.js. And this is written in Node.js, and eventually I'd like to run it on the Dell Wise 3040 as a standalone web service. But it has an Electron-based app that can also run locally on your computer. And that's what I'm doing today. So when we first opened CNC.js, it found our serial port, which in this case is dev TTY USB serial 110. And it shows a whole bunch of other widgets, some of which might be useful to us and some of which probably aren't. So we'll click manage widgets up here and see what we want to disable. I'm using a gerbil based controller, so I want the gerbil widget, but I'm not using Marley or Smoothie or Tiny G. So we can get rid of some of these. I'm not using a laser. Um, I don't really have any macros or custom widgets. I don't have a webcam yet. So we got rid of the widgets we don't need. There we go. So now we can say open the connection to USB serial. We're connected and we got the machine up. So the machine is currently here. It's not in the home position. The home position is to the left and to the back. So we're gonna tell the machine unlock and then we're gonna tell it home. It should go up and home the Z axis against the Z axis limit. And then it should home the other two axes at the same time. So the machine is now homed. Now I'm gonna put my stock on the bed and we're gonna set up a work coordinate. Put this sideways. That's tight. Now I got the spoil board clamped down. Now I gotta figure out how to fixture my piece of plastic. So desperate to get this project going, I got two types of double stick tape from Menards. And I don't really have a lot of hope that either of them will do great, but we're gonna try them out anyway. I got some double sided tape. We'll try to stick it down. Probably gonna end terribly, but we'll see. So now I need to home the work offset of the machine. So I'm just gonna drive the machine over to a corner that I think has enough stock for the piece I wanna cut. And say work position, zero out work offsets. So that's coordinate system G54. I realized when I did that, I accidentally erased my Z position too. 
So I go back over and uh, probe the Z offset after doing the work coordinate. The Z axis probe here. First I need to know the height of the probe. So I got calipers. It's not really a common size in either metric or imperial. It's reading uh, 558 thou. I don't think that's a common metric size. Yeah, it's 14.17 millimeters, which is an odd size. So I'm gonna probe this on the spoil board because in my CAD model, Z goes up from the bottom surface of the workpiece. So I'm gonna just move my bit over that. We're gonna to go to the probe. We're gonna probe the Z axis with a G38.2. Touch plate thickness, 14.17 mil. Let's go. Run probe. Now it's gonna move down really, really slowly until it hits that touch plate. Okay, so now we have zeroed the Z axis on our spoil board. We can get rid of this probe. We'll go back to the work origin. So this is the origin of our workpiece. Now I got to get the G-code ready. I made this model in FreeCAD. It contains features that are representative of what my dad needs in his projects. So we have through holes, which are made with helixes. These are for bolts. We have slots. These are used for adjustment with bolts. We have an outside profile with both convex and concave features. I have a long concave cut here. And I have a pocket that's narrow. And the idea with this pocket is that you can cut shapes or letters into the back of the part. So when you flip it over and look at the front, this side, because it's clear plastic, it'll show through as like a uh, matte finish. So after I made the model in FreeCAD, I came to Path Workshop. I did all the operations. So helix the holes, pocket the two slots. Pocket the triangle in the middle and profile the outside. I decided not to do a dress up and leave tags because I'm using tape to hold down the workpiece. In theory, it should hold itself down just fine. So let's run a simulation and see what it shows. This is the path the machine is supposed to take. Hopefully it does. I don't know why it keeps going back to the origin every time. So there we go, we're done. That's the path we're hoping to take. This whole part is about four inches by four inches. It shouldn't take too long in the machine. So now we have the cutout part, it's a cut material. Uh, now we'll generate the post process. So when I set up the job, the output, I gave it an NC file. I'm using the gerbil processor because I have a gerbil-based machine, and I'm using a G54 work coordinate system. That's about it. I have a 3.17 millimeter tool, which is an eighth inch end mill setup. That's what I'm going to be using for this entire operation. So we click the job, we'll click the post process, and then we should have a G code file. So here's what our G-code looks like. It's pretty simple. So we're using G54, which is the work coordinate system. Uh, we set M3, which is set spindle forward. Or in the case of gerbil, it's just set spindle. There is no reverse in gerbil. 10,000 RPM. We have some rapids to go to the helix operation. The G2s are the helixes. There's some pockets. Yeah, so this looks pretty simple. So yeah, let's run this. So we've got our G-code loaded. It's showing us the boundary and the extents of the code. And this cool visualization here. Safety glasses on, because this could potentially be dangerous. Uh, I think I set the feed rate kind of high, so I'll probably want to slow down the feed rate. I don't know, we'll try 50% maybe? Let's hit the YOLO button. Yeah, no, it's not working. It's like a, uh, it's like a goo. Can I tear it? No, oh, it's too strong. So let's rehome the machine. Do it again. Yellow button.
Well, finished, I mean, that's a good sign, right? Made a mess, but I mean, we kind of expected a mess. Oh God, no. Well, I got my plastic part, but the protective film is stuck to the table still. Actually, this feels pretty great. I don't know, surface finish isn't fantastic, but uh, I don't know what we expected. This goo tape is not good. Oh God, it's already stuck to my screwdriver. Uh, get out of there. Well, it worked, I did it. So, is that conclusion to the video? So now that we made a big mess, where do we go from here? So as I said earlier, I'm running CNCJS on my laptop. I don't want to dedicate a laptop to this. I want the configuration to stay in one place. So I'm going to set this up, some tape on here, I don't know. This is going to run CNCJS, so I don't have to plug my laptop in every time I want to use it. And if anyone else wants to use it, they don't have to configure all the machine settings in CNCJS. So this will be a future topic. So these guys just came in the mail recently. This is a Y-axis extension that turns it from a 3018 into a 3040, which more than doubles the build area. But it doesn't change the size of the bed. The bed's still tiny. So this is a new MDF spoil board, and this replaces the aluminum bed with a wood one. And my hope is I can stick the plastic down directly onto the MDF with double-sided tape and not have to have the aluminum bed at all. So as always, stay tuned for the next adventures in this project.